going to record this session and I have another teacher friend in. Okay. Okay, teacher friends, I got most of you added back over onto this side. Thank you so very much. So we are recording this session at this time so that you will be allowed to go back in and to rewatch to gain some new ideas or to hear it again, because sometimes we go through some items that are quite quick and we need to make sure that we can um, help each other uh, gain those ideas and then to put them into practice. We did a brief intro in the other side of the window, but at this time, if you would like, in our back channel chat area, you'll see a bottom ribbon on Zoom, and there's a chat feature. And if you can click on that chat feature, that will allow for us at this time to communicate with one another. And if you'd like to introduce yourself again, um, identifying uh, who you are, what the impressive and inspirational role that you teach in your school district, or if you support adult learners, we'd love to hear from you. So if you could at this time, if in the chat area, please identify who you are, which school district that you support, or which uh, level of children that you are supporting, or adult learners, because we'd love to hear from you. Okay, teacher friends. So I'll give it just a moment. Again, the bottom ribbon on the Zoom, you'll, you'll have a little icon of the chat and that will open up a sidebar window that you can identify yourself. Okay, Kara, welcome. Grade seven through 12, alternative education. So glad you're here, teacher friends. Oh, this is excellent. And you'll have to let me know um, if you are from the West Coast, the Midwest, the, uh, the East Coast, everybody's coming at a different level, I see. Okay, wonderful. I know I have a lot of great Q teacher friends that are in here from California, so welcome everyone. This is great. Oh, Indiana. I know I had a Kansas friend in here too. Folsom, California. Excellent. I'm glad that you're here. This is wonderful. Middle school teachers, elementary teachers, we've got high school teachers that are here. This is marvelous. Okay, excellent. Wonderful teacher friends. Okay, near Los Angeles County. Excellent. <laughs> this is great. Rosa, glad you're here, friend. And our wonderful Cheryl, you're back in, our speech pathologist um, from Atlanta, Georgia. Thanks for hanging in there and coming back into the other side. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay, there's a few more of you if you'd like to do an intro, but as you can see, together we are better. And because of that, um, we are joining teacher friends from the West Coast, the East Coast, the Midwest, and some teachers may be joining us from international schools. So just so that you're aware, this session will be recorded. Thank you for accommodating to hop over to this new Zoom room just because the other one was just giving us, we'll call it some technology hiccups or bumps. That's what I call it. But glad that you're here at any given time. Please use the back channel chat. Um, that if you'd like to ask a question, pose a question, or even say, hey, Naomi, I've got a question. Could we pause and reflect? Please do so. You have full control of your microphone, teacher friends. So next to your name, you'll also see that there'll be a mic indicator and a video indicator that you can turn and turn on and turn off that. Um, you have a ribbon on the bottom of the Zoom toolbar that you'll also see where you can turn on and off your mic and video. So as we continue, if you do have your mic on, please remember that sometimes we can hear background noise. So if you've got kiddos at home, that's fine. You may have pets, um, other things, but it can be distracting sometimes to others. So we'll just say just to respect that space. I could mute you at this time too, but I'm gonna, you're adult learners, so you can take care of that, which is not a problem. Okay. So let's get started. Um, I just wanted to give you a brief info. My name is Naomi Harm. I'm joining you from beautiful Cave Creek, Arizona. Um, I once upon a time up to three years ago was a resident of California and I stu still do a lot of stuff for Q in general and I absolutely love it. Um, but my hometown, you could say I'm originally from the Midwest. You're going to hear that accent coming through. Um, originally from Northeast Iowa. Then I lived most of my life 40 years plus between Minnesota and Wisconsin. 
So I've been an educator for over 25 years. I own my own company, which I absolutely love, which is a women leadership company. But I do a lot with training teachers and how to inspire teachers of how to create dynamic projects to really engage and motivate kids. So we are here today to learn about Microsoft Word of getting started, some tips and tricks, and what the possibilities can be. So I'm going to share my screen with you teacher friends at this time. And when I do that, what I'd like to share with you are some wonderful possibilities of what we have. So I'm gonna share my screen. So now I'm going to also maximize that screen so that you can see. You can also see that some of us have the window pane open yet that you can still see. You have access to the chat that's kind of behind my window pane. So in case if you need to interject a question, please say, Naomi, we've got a question. Could you share this with us or go here? Absolutely. And I can see most of you online and uh, of who's here today. So thank you for allowing me to have all of you there. Now, I'm going to give you just a few examples before we get started. I'm in the midst of creating a homemade social emotional learning coloring book for my niece that's graduating high school. As we know, these Generation Z students have been through so much and now they are not together in their classrooms and not with their best <laughs> friends and their students. And because of that, um, we need to help these students know that they are going to be safe moving forward and also knowing that they have different types of practices to help them when they get stressed. More so than ever, we as adults need to model that. So one way that I like to create projects in Microsoft Word is I like to personalize the learning for the kids I work with. So this one's gonna go for my niece. So here's just a start of what it looks like. So I've got a great cover page. I've got a dedication page to my niece and her name is Sage. Yes, like Sage the herb. And what is wonderful about this uh, of the why, because we're so proud of her, what she's done, but we as an aunt and uncle to her, want to thank her for her dedication of doing so well in K through 12. Yet, I can simply create a really simplified table of contents. And then from here, as a project, I have taken my own personal pictures of our unique cacti that we have here in Arizona, and I've put it through a sketch program, which can change a picture into a sketch. And by doing that, this can instantly become a coloring book. So I'm just gonna give you just two examples. I'm waiting for some great pictures from my sister. So I can add- I'm Sorry, we can't see your screen. Oh. It's black. Oh, you can't see the screen? No, no, we're missing it. Yeah. Oh, good heavens, just wait. Let me see what we have. Okay. Okay, let's try this. Um, let's go here. Thank you, I appreciate you saying that. So I went back over at this time. Okay, let's go here. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, wow, that is really interesting. So what I did is I went back out and I went back in. So that was my tip and trick because of that happens to you. Once again, so this is kind of the graduation um, overview. You can create a beautiful title page and keep it simplistic. You can create a dedication page. You can then in return create a really simplified table of contents. And then you can also then add your coloring book pages. You can take your real photos that you've created and you can put them through a sketch program and just create a coloring book. You can create multiple pictures. You can do one dedicated picture. It's really up to you. But that's just one project that I'm doing for helping my niece accommodate to the type of stress that she's in right now. And for her coloring, and where the brain-based research is really helps. Now, if I switch and let's go to a different page. Now, can you see this page now as the family newsletter? If you can tell me yes or no. No, still so you, a cactus. Isn't this interesting? Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm gonna give you a new share then, and I will give you this one. Because what I'm doing in the toolbar that we have within Word, you'll be able to switch windows and I can switch windows to show my different types of examples. So another template that's built instantly into Word that we'll get to momentarily is that you can create a family newsletter. So 
for time saving sakes, I can use a template. I can add my own personalized pictures. So we've got a kitty cat that caught a little bunny rabbit recently and treated it just as a friend. I've got some flowers. I've got our cat that we have and my son that loves the kitty. But instantly these templates become placeholders that you can create a beautiful family newsletter flyer, or it could be a newsletter that you share with your students and parents to stay connected. You can instantly put pictures in, you have placeholders for text, and as you go on, you can beautify it the way that you want it to. So that's another example. So another new share that I'm gonna share with you, here's another example. Okay, let's go to the next one. Let's go to remote teaching and learning. And I wanna make sure that you are seeing this one correctly now. And if you could tell me yes or no that you are seeing the uh, choice board. Yes. Thank you. You're gonna get extra points today <laughs> for giving me my feedback here. Um, something that I like to do with kids of all levels, even our high school kids, they love choice. So this is a remote learning tic-tac-toe choice board. And what I love when I create choice boards, I love to have it in strong pedagogical practices. So I always put in the center of my tic-tac-toe board, I always put a literature-based concept that kids can watch a video that's a read aloud. If you haven't heard about Kid Lit TV, this is a must for you to tap into this particular uh, resource. Kid Lit TV has amazing authors who are so animated that do read alouds of their wonderful books. And the books are for elementary, middle school, or high school. Once the children choose to read and, I mean, sorry, to listen to the read aloud, then I give kids a choice. And then throughout the week, what you'll see is they can choose different types of skills. So this book was all about a wish and what you would wish for and how it's going to help you personally and how it's going to change your world of you making a wish that could influence others. So I give a choose your own adventure story. You can create that in Word. Kids could say, where's my wish? They could create their own I Spy book, basically. And that I Spy book, what they could do is they can create and put bitmojis on it and put different wish forms. And then kids view it as a, use it as a search and find. Maybe it's sketch and tell. Sketch and tell could also be a model example. And that model example can be that it can improve their skills at this time. Other things, did you know that you can create a marketing flyer within Word? Absolutely. You can create a design a board game. You could create a new card game in Microsoft Documents. But what I really like is that kids have the opportunity to design different types of strategies in Word but then they also can create prototypes and stories. So I just wanted to give you three quick examples of even something to get started with of what it looks like. Okay, so teacher friends, to get started now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our main um, homepage at this time. So what I'd like each of you to do, and I wanna make sure that you are sh seeing the correct window pane that I have open and I'm gonna go back here to my desktop to share with you, okay? What I'd like you to do, and you can follow along if you'd like, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to launch my Microsoft Word. My Microsoft Word I have in my bottom dock of my laptop computer that I'm currently using. So I wanna give uh, just an overview again too. Can all of you see my current desktop? Okay, thank you, friend. When I launch my Microsoft Word, what you'll be able to see now is that it takes you into my main display of my homepage. My main display of my homepage of what it's getting me at this time is that I can give the preview at this time of what I have. And what I have is I have my documents that I've created. So in the midst of the larger display layout, what I have is it says I have my choice board activity, my newsletter activity. I also have my congratulations stage coloring book activity. I've got some curriculum maps and so on. 
you can also see that I have a check mark next to each of those. That means that I also have them saved in my OneDrive in the cloud and that I have shared them with individuals at this time. On the left sidebar, you'll see that NH stands for my name, so I know that I'm logged into my account. I also can go back to my home of all of my items that I have here. This is where I can easily start and create a brand new document. I can also click on recent, where, which I'm in that display at this time, and that gives me everything that I have recently accessed. I can also go into my shared area. If somebody shared a document back with me, this is where I would find the shared item. I also can go back into open, and open allows for me to open up my items I have saved locally on my computer, or I can go to my OneDrive to find everything that I have saved. But what I'd like you to do at this time is I'd like you to click on the new item icon. And when I click on new, the beauty of this is that you have the opportunity to click on new, and in that space, you can see that you can create a document that can start off as a blank document. I also have an item that says take a tour. And when I take a tour, that gives me all the ins and outs and step-by-steps of basically what we're doing here today. So that's a great one-stop shop to help you even when we're done. You can see I have a notes Microsoft document I could do, use. I've got a calendar, I've got resumes, I've got cover letters. I can do journal writing. This is a great area for kids that you can set up custom social emotional learning journals for kids or something content and subject specific. Newsletters, there's so many beautiful ones. Brochures, you'll see that I can even do a little ticket item. Maybe I've got a rummage sale that I'm gonna have later this summer. I can set that up for my personal use. I've got research papers. I've got a trip journal, I've got a menu, and you can see that you can even do family updates through your own newsletter. So the choices are just amazing here, teacher friends. You've got so much that you can choose. Okay, so lots of items here. I'm gonna get started and we're gonna go just with a simple blank document. So when I click on my blank document, you can see that it's identified because I've clicked on it, it now is outlined in blue. Once it's outlined in blue, it's mean it has been chosen. And I'm going to go down to my bottom right corner and click on create. When I click on create, now you'll be able to see that I have a new blank document. Okay, and I'm going to just ask for a quick check, teacher friends. Can you still see my screen of a new blank document? Yes. Okay, perfect. So teacher friends, thanks for hanging in there with us. So what we have here is this new blank document. I want to really share some things of the navigation landscape of how and where to find items. Now, our main item area, when we look at this whole area that notes from home all the way to tell me, I mean, this whole bar that's in here that's got three layers, that is really called your ribbon. The ribbon has all of the wonderful items to get to and from of what you're looking to do. This area here underneath the home and insert, that's kind of our formatting options. And we can format where we can cut, copy, paste, and then paste multiple times. We also have some other formatting uh, options with customization that I can use with fonts. So you'll see in here that I can have all kinds of choices of all kinds of fonts. Now, not everything of every font is installed, and you'll see some that I can even download, because if I haven't had Cavallini downloaded, I can download that um, from online, and that will add right back into my font collection. So you've got lots of choices. You'll also see that you have your standard formatting of what you have for um, Word, from bold, italicized, underlines. I can do subscripts, I can do strikethroughs, and then you'll also see that any types of our word choices that I will have here. So if I write in, I'll just say, hello, teacher friends. And if I click over the word text and highlight it, I can easily increase my file size playback of that font, and I can easily decrease it too. But remember, there's always two or three ways that you can get started with this. 
So once I get started, I could easily drop my font indicator of my size and then choose to make it larger or smaller. So very similar in other word processing programs that you've worked with. You've got your other tools as well that I can highlight. I can change the color of my font. Maybe I wanna make it orange. Maybe I wanna make it red. Or maybe I really wanna make it a more really dynamic color. I can make it with a granite fill. I can choose more colors. And more colors of your palette wheel will provide for you over really 264 colors. So you've got so much choice. But if there's really a really a passion purple that I wanted and I choose that from the color wheel, I can now, I can choose that color and say, sure, I wanna add that to my color wheel. So it's absolutely wonderful to get started um, with having so many choices. Now, some of you may say, well, Naomi, what is this, what is this toolbar up here? Well, this is a quick access toolbar that you have. That quick access toolbar allows for you to get to and from items that you use very frequently. You can even customize this toolbar. But as you can see, I have a home button. When I click on that home button, it takes me right back to my beginning of my display of my home page is where I'm at. So it's absolutely wonderful. I can go back. Uh, when it shows my home. Now I have all of my items of what I've been working on at this time. I could easily go back in of recently what I've worked on, go back and start with my blank document again. So when I start with this blank document, what is wonderful about this, because you saw earlier, we, we said at the beginning, I went, hello, teacher friends. And then with this, I made it bigger, so I changed that font size playback. I went in and say, yes, let's add that purple color so you can see it's still there because we added it. But you notice that I haven't given it a title yet. And that's where the importance of the title bar comes in, which is next to your quick access toolbar. So this one right here is where my document is at. Now, what I can do is you have this symbol here where you can save. When I save it, it is noting the title of the first sentence or chunks of words that I've decided to take. I can easily rename it that if I don't want to say hello teacher friends, I could name it something else. Right now it's saving to my OneDrive, my personal area, and it's going to be saving as a Word doc. What we have is I could change it to somewhere else. I could put it back in another place on my Mac computer or I can save it in the cloud. The beauty for when you save it in OneDrive and it saves in the cloud, I can instantly share this with another teacher friend and then he or she can co-collaborate with me. That's the beauty of this. So now that this is saved, that I have it saved, um, you're gonna say, hello, teacher friends. You can tell it's saved because I haven't made any other changes. When I go back to home, and I go back to my most recent. Let's go back to our teacher friends. Whoops, just a minute, go back here. It's thinking, right? Because it's in our drive of where we're at. So if I go to open and I want to go to my OneDrive of my documents, and then I should be able to get into my hello teacher friends, which is taking just a minute to come up here. Thank you for being patient. Where did she go? Thank you for being patient, everyone. Let's make sure I got it here for you. Let's go just, let me minimize this just a little bit and let me get back in here to go here. And let's go between my windows. Here we go. Okay, so I have it cascaded because I have five documents up at this time, but let's go to our save again to making sure that we're saving it. Okay, and if I also choose it to be saved on my Mac, it says, hello, teacher friends, and I'm going to make sure I save it. I have it saved in two locations so I can have something locally, especially when I wanna work on it if I have limited internet, but then I can save it in the cloud as well too. 
So as we continue on, this quick access toolbar will allow for me also to undo any changes. I can undo text fill, font, typing, even to go back what I've done. So you can see the different steps that I've done. It can go back and undo up to 256 times. That's, that's what's incredible about this. You have the power at your tips of your fingers to go back and go back to a previous version. So if I go back to even my text fill, it's going back now and look at it, it's taken that away. I can easily go forward with it and say, oh, I wanna add that color back in. And that's the beauty of this. Now, you also in your quick access toolbar, you have your print. So if I was done with this document, let's say I was done, I could print it easily, which is great. I also have the next tool to go to save as. So when I save as, in case of I need to rename it, that I wanted to keep it hello as teacher friends, but then I want to create another document, I could rename it as that as well. Again, spell check is built in right at the beginning. It says you don't have any changes. But some of you may say, Naomi, there's a few more tools that I would really like to use that are not built into this. So if I have my drop down next to the quick access toolbar, what you're seeing is these are the items that are currently checked. I could say, please add that send document. If I add send document, look at here. I get a new icon in my quick access toolbar that I can in, in, instantly, that when I set my email up, I can send it that way. Or I can click at the very top as well, I can click share. Share also allows for me to share a, and send a copy as an email attachment or upload it as well too. Now, what's wonderful about this, let me go back one more time. When I go back to my home, remember that's where we have all of our items here. And here's my most recent document that I have for Hello Teacher Friends. These little buttons that are at the end of that placeholder, this is where I can share as well. And when I share here, it looks very similar to the other item that I have. Once it's saved in your OneDrive that it, that it is saved, you can be able to send a copy and send that copy again as an email attachment. Let me move this over so you can see it. As an email attachment, or I can upload it through using my tools that are built on my particular laptop is what I have. I also have the option when I click on share, that if I've invited someone and sent it by email already, this is where I can invite more people. Meaning, if I have a Word document and I want three students to work on a document together, I can invite just those three students to have collaboration rights and they can design and create together as a productive, active team. I could also share it by copying a link and sending it to them. But if I've got groups set up, if I'm using Microsoft Teams or another learning management or content system, or I can send a copy to others. But just so you know, once that you have it saved locally, and even if you have it saved in your drive, you can send that email to a friend that they can collaborate on. And that's the beauty of this, because when I send it as a copy, you can have that right for them to create and make with it. Now that I have an example here that I've shared a choice board, I gave an example that I am the owner of it, and then my other email account, I sent it. So this person has editing rights. If I need to take editing rights away from that, I simply can right click on that and say, send another email to Naomi to remind her that she can create or change permission that that person can just view and not modify the document, or I can stop sharing right away and they no longer have access to that. So the power is in this home display is once you've shared and sent out an email, you can add as many people as you'd like or take that privilege away that if you only want them to view it at this time. Okay, let's go back and open this document up and I'm gonna pause just for a minute. Do we have any questions at this time that I'd like to open this up that if you like to ask any questions? Any questions, teacher friends? Okay. 
let me see in the back channel chat also. I'm going to go up to my ribbon bar and to see, um, let's see if we've, what kind of messages that you do have, if there's any at this time. Okay. All right. But please, at any time, I'd like you to please uh, share any questions you ha may have or to go over something that may be new. Okay. Now, your other items, you have a tab structure that's built into this main ribbon area. You have home, you have insert, draw, design, layout, and so on. Underneath each one of those tabs, you have so many items to help you. As you could imagine, when you click insert, insert will allow for you to insert anything into your document. And where my placeholder is, I have the blinking eye at the end of friends. If I do an enter or return, once I insert, it's going to go into that placeholder. So perhaps I want to add a table. I can say, yep, I wanna create maybe a simplified tic-tac-toe board. I can do a three by three grid. And I can instantly add that table that's in there. So simplified, I can add that quickly. I'm not going to resize it yet um, because I'll share with you some other items. Maybe there's something prior to that table I wanted to insert. Maybe I'd like to insert a picture. I can do the drop down next to the picture icon. I can browse for a photo that's on my computer. I can add a picture from a file, or I can add online pictures. So simplified enough, let's say, hey, online pictures, let's check that out. So when I click and look at the pictures that are online, what I have here is it opens up on the right sidebar. It provides for me an area that says Bing. These are pictures that I can find according to categories or I can add in my own search specifications. So in this area where it says search, maybe I wanna find something today that has something to do with also a cactus, we'll say. And if I do a search, you're going to see very easily that I have cactus icons, cactus photos, cactus landscapes, I've got a barrel cactus here, and then I have some graphics that play back almost like a cartoon. But perhaps if I'd want something that would almost be more transparent, I could put the word transparency behind here. And now you'll see that I'll get a cactus that doesn't have a background to it that can maybe look a little bit more contemporary look and feel. And I'll say, okay, let's choose this one. I have this cactus and I'll click insert. Then by doing that, what you're seeing instantly is I have a picture that's been inserted. I also have the attribution rights of the particular author and it's licensed under, um, it says the CCBYNC uh, that I can use that photo. If I'm sharing this photo, and again, I'm not making money off of it, but what I'd like to do at this time I may, maybe at this time, I don't quite want uh, that to be as a placeholder. I can highlight that and delete it. And then the picture becomes the natural picture, but it's still embedded the attribution rights of that particular photo that will come up if somebody does a search. So you still have that built in. I can easily, when I add that picture, something that I like to do to help with some of the text wrapping playback in here, I could easily right click on that picture and then I have a wrapping text. Right now, it defaults to in line with text. If you know that you're gonna have chunks of information, that's absolutely fine. I usually like to make it that I can put it in front of text, so then that way I can move it where I need it to go. So that's a simple tip and trick to move it anywhere you want. Otherwise, when you right click on the picture and you also have the wrap text, if you put it back in line with text, what it's going to do, it's going to want to try to go back into a space. So see when I moved it, it jumped right into that table. So I can undo that 
go back in on the right click, wrap that text and put it in front. So now I can really move it where I want it to go. I can resize it by the toggle handles on the corners, but just having that visual um, impact can really help with the flow of any item that you're adding. Now, other things that you can see when you go to insert, you've got pictures, shapes, icons, 3D models. You can add charts. You've got all kinds of items that are here. I can even add media. Media meaning that if I know that I've got movie that I can find from my computer or I can browse for a, a video that I can add, I can do it that way. I could browse for audio. I could browse for a file. I can also insert a link. So if I would highlight Hello Teacher Friends and I would click on a link, that's where I can link this to an outside online resource. I could link it to a favorite bookmark site that I have, or I could cross-reference it because if I have Hello Teacher Friends as my title, maybe throughout my document, I reference that again and I want it linked again so the kids have quick access of to and from if they're finding things. But at the same time, if I want to click on link, I can link it to a web page somewhere in this document or an email address. So let's say if I'd like to click on and we'll save it to, let's go here. And if I go to pixabay.com and why I'd want to use pixabay.com is because that's another choice of an online free copyright friendly picture resource that's appropriate for education. So I could also say, hello, teacher friends, you know, check out this Pixabay resource. So because of that, um, sharing that, I can easily go back in too and I could link all of it, or I could go back in and highlight it again and click on link, and then I can link all of it to be that, and I can click that and select it, okay? And then click okay. So it's still gonna work, and you'll see that it will take me out. Let's just a moment, please. Show with you what it looks like. So Pixabay comes up and you can see we've got some beautiful high end, high definition photos that you can use in what you're creating. So that's why I wanted to share it with you as another tip and trick to be added with that. Now, when I get back to my particular resource here, the other items I wanted to make sure that you can see, I'm gonna move my little toolbar here. Everything that when I click insert and when I click it again, it hides that toolbar because if I need more dynamic creation space. If I click it again, it opens up everything related to insert. You can also see over here that I can add headers, footers, page numbers, anything that you would like to help as identifiers to help with workflow with students and teachers to navigate that particular document. I can add certain text boxes. So if I say I wanna draw a text box, I can easily add a text box and add new text here is what I'll say. When I add new text here, I have all the same rights to highlight that text. And when I go back um, into this, I could easily go back to home and change that style again, whichever size that we, you'd want, change the font, whatever you'd like it to be. But the beauty of this, once you add a text box, it acts as an object. And that object, when I right click on it, I have the right to do different things to it, that I can copy it, I can paste it, I can still hyperlink it, I can translate it. But let's go back here again. Now when you see when I right click on it, I, got a, I have four little arrows as my tool. And when I click on it, now you can see that I have even more options to group objects together. I can layer a text field with my table, with my picture. I can send it back, I can move forward. I can hyperlink it, I can add a caption, and I even have the right to change my text wrapping, just like we did for the photo. 
where this it's in front as well and it can move with the text. So anytime that you add an object into here, like even the text, when I hover over the edge, I'll get that symbol that has four arrows, meaning it's an object and I can edit that and create something. Now, some other items that you may have already seen that we have here in the insert, um, you'll also see over here that I can add uh, specialty word art. And the word art will allow for me that when it comes in, it brings it as a text box as well. And if I put in the word here, students this time, what you're also seeing is that this is playing back as a different type of font. You're going to have it more bold, more robust, and it's very colorful. I also can go back in and once it's clicked, I have lots of options to layer it again because if maybe you want the student name in front of the cactus, or maybe you want the student name in front of a different image. But this is what's wonderful. When I double click in this space, I can, with any object, I could fill that. And I could fill that space maybe this time that I wanna have a blue background. Now that you'll be able to see that I have this, I can move this around, put it here. I can move um, tables. I can move this down further, move my cactus. As you can see, see the layering? Maybe I wanna take that and now I'm gonna say, let's bring that to the front. And I can put my cactus right in here. So the beauty of this is you can do so much with adding, whether it's pictures, whether it's word art, whether it's tables, whether it's text. Getting the layering technique down can make a really dynamic playback of what you can create and make within a particular document. Now, I know we only have an hour here for you today, teacher friends, so I'm gonna give you a few other tips and tricks of what we have to work on with that playback. But not only do you have the search, or the insert features, you also have drawing. Some of you are gonna say, Naomi, I wanna do some freehand. Some of you may be working with a Microsoft Office mobile device also that you can do some of that sketch noting. That's what's beautiful about this. But I can at any given time, I can still, if I want something highlighted, I can choose that highlighter bar and I can still highlight. And it gets a free drawing tool and I'm just using basically my keyboard and kind of like my mouse area on my trackpad, and I can highlight an area, which is beautiful. I could choose different colors. I can add a pen. You've got a pen, highlighter, and pencil. I can easily go back and erase too. So if there's something that I need to erase, I can make it as a medium eraser, and I can go back in and easily erase what I've done. A lot of times why we do and use the highlighter it helps kids focus on given areas when they're reading. It also helps children identify if you're giving them a task to do a search and find, whether if you're looking for adjectives or adverbs or nouns or verbs, they go through and they mark up the document and it helps them with the word flow and the ease of creating that as well. Okay, now other items that we have, you'll also see that we've got design options. Design options gives us a different type of layout of what we want that feeling of reaction of how that Word document works. I can easily go into fancy and it spreads it out as a beautiful, well-balanced item for text flow. I can go in and make it even different if you'd like. Now, if I have more text in here, it's going to flow. Some of you may want a lot of heavy text and so you may choose that. You always will have an additional arrow to allow for you to choose more options that you have in here, teacher friends. So always use the arrow that you see to the left or the right of a particular tool set, and that's going to provide for you lots of options. You also have lots of themes, so always look with the drop-down arrows. Those are hidden little gems that are built in that can help you with create some really dynamic things. So when I chose that theme, instead of my blue, it's going to change this to yellow in different areas that you'll see. Okay. You also can uh, work in this space to get access to your fonts, consistency, your paragraph spacing as well. And then also what you're looking for if you need to watermark or protect a document, or maybe it's just a draft and you wanna share it with a teacher friend, so you wanna put draft across it. Um, and that works really nice. You also have an option to do page coloring. You can make your whole page coloring right away of what that is, because we know 
from brain-based research that too much white at a given time is too much for some of our kiddos when we're working with them. So making it a soft, subtle color, I even kind of like a color like this, which is very, very light and easy to follow. And brain-based research says something that's not as starking as a white can help kids with eye strain over a given time. A calming color that you may want to think about is your lighter turquoises and your blue colors also are a relaxing color to help on, e, on eye strain and for helping kids with reading. So something that you may wanna think about. You also have a, a page borders that's built in that if you're looking for something simplified, I can pick and choose a page border and simply choose the width of that page border and then click OK as what you'll be able to see in here instantly, it formalizes that and becomes more contemporary looking um, that if I'd like to use as well. But lots of tools that are built in. Now, based on our time, we have about five or six minutes left, but I'm gonna jump over to something quickly so that you can see before I get back to layouts. This little tool at the very top of this tab is called Tell Me. Now, because there's so much built in to this wonderful Microsoft Word, sometimes we may forget where are those items? Naomi mentioned I could change the layout or we could go in and customize the design, but where is that again? So under tell me, this is where you can type in what you're looking for. So I may be looking for something like I want to um, add a bullet item. And when I put in add a bullet and I do a search, it quickly allows for me to say, oh, there it is. So I don't have to open up a tab. It showcases right away that Naomi, oh, to put in bullets, it's giving me a choice of the library right away. So I don't even have to go out and come back in. I also could put maybe another item that's in here. Maybe I wanna do something with pictures and it's gonna help me. Now I have pictures it's gonna help me choose and photo browse for a picture. Or maybe I wanna add an effect. Now it's gonna share with me what I can do. But in order for me to add an effect, I have to have a picture selected first to add an effect. So this item that we have called Tell Me is probably one of those better than chocolate moments because it really helps us guide us quickly with efficiency and productivity. Productiv productivity if we have, have not found that particular item quickly. So if you can't remember, was it under insert? Was it in design? Was it in layout? You can easily find it there. Now I'm going to hop back to layout. Layout's a lot of fun too, because especially if you are creating something that's going to be dynamic as a publication. Now what we have here is where you can set up your margins. Margins are especially important because if you will be doing some printing or some playback as a digital book, and this is where you may want to have one inch by one inch by one inch by one inch borders to making sure that when it prints, it doesn't run off the particular page setting. So by default, our Word docs are set up as one inch by one inch by one inch by one inch. But sometimes you may wanna say, well, Naomi, I think I can print out to the outer edge and I need to get more content and pictures. That's where you can choose on narrow. Narrow actually puts it way to the outer edge that you can change that. In case if you don't like that, you can always undo and it goes back to your already original settings. But you also have here, this is where layout will also take you to landscape mode, or back to portrait mode. You can also change the size. The size matters when we are creating something that has to be legal versus letter versus an A4 for printing. In A4, we usually use that when we go up to actually set up booklet styles that we need customized pages to making sure when they print so that I get a binder or if they're made for a professional purpose. We also have different types of margin setups too that if you're doing for A3s and envelopes and other sizes that you can see here. By default, US letter is by the 8.5 by 11 inches. That's kind of your standard. If you're working with a bigger type of a document and it's more of a poster size, you may wanna use that US legal, but we can always go back and change that. 
You may also want to build in your types of breaks because you know that you have a section one, a section two, and a section three. That will give you breaks in your pages where this will help me to do a, a nice hard break that I can always get to that next page. Now, the beauty of this is that you also can set it to automatically go to a next page to continue the flow of information or it skips by page according to the purpose of your content that you're designing. So again, that's up to you how you'd like to set that up. We also have line numbers that you can put in. Hyphenation can be set and hyphenation is if you have a word that's flowing to the outer edge and it really needs to be broken at the syllable chunk, that will help you to hyphenate those options so that it's a natural break to make sense of how to pronounce that word. Now, other items for you, teacher friends, I'm gonna jump over here because we'll get to references and mailings um, in our next session, but you also have more table design. So if I would have done something more with this table, I have a table design that's in here that I could have changed that type of table of that playback at a given time. So lots of options that we'll get into next time so we can make those wonderful choice boards. We also have view. View is important that I can see many things at one time. View allows for me to look at it, what's it going to look like when it's going to be a print layout versus if I'm putting it on the web and what the web looks like. So that's what the differences are. I can also see it in an outline view, but then I can also look at it at the different levels of where it's at. Now, the other options within view that I really like is for myself as an educator, sometimes what I need to do is I need to zoom in on something and I need to make it bigger. And by doing that, it can enhance it and instantly I can see something larger of kind of where I'm at. If I go back to my print layout view and now I wanna go back to my view to make it larger, I click on zoom and then I can zoom in because sometimes we just need that fine detail of what we're looking at and what we want to create and make. Okay, teacher friends, I am going to stop sharing at this time. We've got a lot of information that we shared in a little bit of time, and I wanna make sure I can get to any of your questions, that if any of you had questions at this time, and let's go to our chat area and to see if any other items have come in. Let's go here, okay. And I'm going to, um, it's back here. Okay, so our participants that are here at this time, just making sure if you have any questions before we close out this session, or in the back channel chat, if you have any other verbal questions that you'd like to respond to so that I can get back to you at this time. So I'm gonna pause right there. And if you'd like to turn on your microphone, um, I'd love to take some questions that you have. Because so I can see all of our teacher friends in the chat area. Yep, I hope that you've got some new tips and tricks. Excellent. Okay. Some of, okay. But please let me know if you have any further questions. Glad to help out. Glad to follow through. And our next session, we'll take it even further and we'll go into more of the dynamics of working with the tables, working an interactive choice board, working with setting up if you want that family newsletter, um, if you'd like to create a teaching guide uh, for students and a choice board activity. So hope to see you back next week that we'll be here. We have two more sessions this week that I'm offering on best practices with mobile teaching and learning with student choice. And then also that we'll be working on lots of opportunities of all the best practices when it comes to pedagogy with student choice as well too. Okay. Well, thank you so much, educators. It's been a privilege and an honor to work with all of you today. And I can't wait to see you next time. And I hope that these sessions will excite and ignite your creativity and your passion-based learning. So thanks, everyone. We'll see you again.